Hello, beautiful people. This is Dee from Rock Paper Fitness, your fitness and fat loss expert here in Mobile, Alabama. And today I'll be talking about weight on the scale. Guess what? Your worth is not tied to your weight. Every day I get the opportunity to coach women and I've been doing this for over 10 years to help them become a better person whether it's through weight loss, weight gain, or stress relief. Maybe they just want to be a part of a community of people who support them on their journey. Nevertheless, I talk to them every day about their goals, I talk to them about their concerns, and I listen to the chit chat they have amongst one another. One thing that I always see that happens in the gym and also outside on social media land is that people tie their worth to the weight on the scale. When I sit down and do a fitness consultation with someone, I ask them what they want to do. The first thing they say is that they want to lose weight. Generally, women believe that when they're smaller or lighter, the number on the scale says something different, that their worth goes up. That first the worth goes up within themselves and then the worth goes up to people who are in their circle. People think better of them or think highly of them. Maybe they believe that they can get another job or get a husband or get a girlfriend or get a, a, another friend and have better opportunity all because the number on the scale says different. But I'm here to tell you today, your worth is not tied to that number on the scale. So I'm gonna give you five reasons or five things to consider when you are setting your goals, especially related to weight loss. Okay, so um, this is actual footage of me getting on the scale because I don't care nothing about this number on the scale. It does not tell anything about my character. It says nothing about my dreams or what my aspirations are. It says nothing about my worth, so here you go. I don't care, really, because I'm not gonna spend my whole life trying to lose 10 or 20 pounds. I'm going to improve on what I have and I'm going on about my business. Number one is the absolute hardest. You have to think back to why and what triggered you to say, I want to lose this amount of weight to feel better about myself. A lot of times it comes when we are five or seven years old 10, 13, maybe you were picked on by a family member, maybe you were, you were bullied in school, maybe it was a teacher, maybe it was somebody from down the street who told you you were chubby, who told you that you were too big or you were big bone, and that really, really, really got under your skin. Maybe that was the trigger and the start from you attaching your weight to your work. But the first step to recovering from that is knowing that your past is your past and you have got to give that up. You've got to give up what people said about you. You've got to give up the, the picking on, the bullying. you got to let that go because that's not you anymore. That is what other people thought of you. you got to let the past go, but then be responsible for your future because that's what really matters. Number two, you have to be confident in yourself, in every flaw you have, in every piece of cellulite, in every stretch mark. If you have small breasts, you gotta be okay with that. If you have a big butt, you gotta be okay with that. If you're shaped like your grandma or your mom, you gotta be okay with that. You have to be confident within your own self. But you have to know, confidence does not equal complacency. Confidence does not equal, I'm going to tell everybody on social media that I'm confident. Confidence is something that comes from within, where you are happy with what you have, you realize that you're not perfect, but what are we doing in this world? We're just on a journey. We are not trying to perfect the journey. We are just staying on course, and that is what confidence is. So even when you are on your journey to weight loss or weight gain or toning, there are things that we can improve with ourselves. There are things that we can make better. But even cell phones, they make them better every year, but there's always a bug or a flaw. But does that stop them from creating iPhones or Androids? No, 
They just make another version that's a little bit better of a next version. And you know what? If they can do that with electronics, surely we can provide or give ourselves the grace of improving, not perfection, but simply improving. Number three, set realistic goals. Don't take yourself around the ringer of setting goals that are other people's goals. This is just a logically good goal. Some people actually believe that just because they possess a gym membership, the weight should just come off. But it's very important to ask yourself, am I putting in the work to actually get the results? This is a consistent thing, you guys. This is a journey that lasts a lifetime. And I know you don't want to hear it because you want to get you want to get snatched in three months. But the real, real truth is that it is absolutely a journey. The thing that keeps humans feeling like they are successful is when we are progressing. And so the dangerous part about setting a goal that is absolute, I want to lose 50 pounds, boom, and then I'm done, is that when you reach that 50 pound goal, you feel like there needs to be something else. So it's very important to set goals that are measurable, that can go on in your timeline, that you can actually do, and that you actually celebrate those timelines, celebrate those accomplishments. Don't just say, oh, I just kind of did it, or I'm trying. You're doing it. Next, when you are deciding to get on your journey, okay, when you want to join a gym, I ask you to change your mindset. Join the gym for the journey. Don't join the gym for the weight loss because this is going to happen. You're going to pick a program according to the money. When the pounds don't come off like you think they should or as fast as they should, you want to cancel your membership because you have no feelings or anything attached to the journey. And now it's just stop and go, stop and go. Join a program, get a trainer, join a gym for the journey, something that you can keep up, something that, that helps with an emotional fulfillment. A lot of my clients join Rock Paper Fitness because it is emotional release. It is stress relief. People support you. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's hard to find people who support you. So you want to join a program that evokes an emotion within you, that gives you happiness, or that gives you joy, or that challenges you, that gives you um, the, uh, the reason to, to go a little bit further, to become a better person. Because the way that you do the gym, the way that you're committed to your health, is generally the way that you're committed to your career, the way that you're committed to your family, okay? For example, if you're one of those go hard or go home people who stop and go, you're probably like that when it comes to the people who are closest to you. You sacrifice them, you go hard, you give your resources, you give your money, you give your time, but when you're burnt out, you absolutely stop. Fitness is a great way to streamline your habits in life and to help you become better. And next, this is the last one. Really make sure you value yourself past a scale. Y'all, this scale was man-made. This scale is a measuring tool that a human being made to tell you how much you weigh and it's not even tied to an emotion within you. It's not tied to your past. It's not tied to job opportunities. It's not tied to your destiny. It's not tied to your vision. God does not care about how much you weigh. And if a person decides they don't like you or they don't want to be around you because of the number on the scale, you need to let them go. This is a thing that measures how much you weigh. There's no worth tied to this number on here. And it's so important for you to get that through your head. As this number goes down, your worth does not go up because guess what? Even if it says 100, that does not mean that you're the greatest person. That doesn't mean that, that you, should, you should get paid more on your job because you're 150 pounds now. It doesn't mean that. It's what's in your heart, it's your character, it's how you treat people, it's how you take care of your home, it's how you take care of yourself, take care of your health. That is your worth. Are you fulfilling what's in your heart? Are you doing what you love? This number on the scale doesn't measure that by any means, you guys. So I'm here to tell you, for real, your worth is not tied to your weight. Your worth is in your heart. Your worth is in your head. 
your worth is, how you love people and how you love yourself. So I wanna encourage you today, when you get on that scale, just use it as a measuring tool to set goals. Don't use it as an emotional tool to figure out your worth. I love you guys so much. I pray nothing but blessings for you. And I hope that you become the most successful self that you set out to be.